morning, Phoenix class, and welcome to today's maths lesson. I understand what a pie chart is. First of all, you've got a recap today. You did really well finding the mean and a bit of problem solving last week. So this is just to remind you what you did before. And then on the next slide, you've got the answers there so you can double check. If you get them wrong, go back to your work from last week so you can have another look through. So let's get on with our first problem. Which chart so shows the most clearly whether an activity received more than half the votes? We've got three different types of chart here. We've got a bar graph, we've got a tally chart, and we've got a pie graph or a pie chart. So let's have a look and see what they're showing us. The title of the graph is the total votes for an activities week. So if we look at the bar chart, first of all, we've got the activities along the bottom and we've got the votes up the side. So we can see that cooking got two votes, painting got six, swimming got three, and the beach was the most popular at 10. And it really is quite easy to see which activity got the least number of votes and which activity got the most. If we then look at the tally chart, again, it's counting the number of votes for the activities. The five stand out really easily, don't they? The ones that are crossed. So it's quite easy to see at a glance how many votes um, each of the activities have got. And again, it's easy to see which one has the most number of votes. Then we go to the pie chart. Now pie graphs are always round. And again, we can see that the cooking got two votes, the painting six, the swimming three, and the beach ten. But this time, it's much, much easier for us to see if any of those is more than half of the whole number of votes counted. You can see on this picture here that there are 21 votes in total. But if we split our circle in half, we can see that actually, although that yellow section, the number of people wanting to go to the beach, is the biggest, it hasn't quite made it over this halfway line here, has it? So none of the activities have scored more than half. So they wouldn't be doing any of them. That's a shame. I think going to the beach sounds like a fantastic idea. So this time the question is asking you, compare the three ways of representing the results. What are the advantages and disadvantages of each chart? So I've got some questions down for you at the bottom. How many more children chose the beach than the cooking? Which chart shows us that the easiest? They all do show us it, but which one is the easiest to see? Well, I think the bar chart is quite easy to see because there were two that chose cooking and that means there were 10 that chose the beach, so therefore the difference is eight. We could work that out again from the tally chart. And yes, we could work it from the pie graph, but the pie is just not as easy to see and neither is the tally as the bar. So I would make that one the bar graph. The next question said, which is the least, least popular activity? Which graph shows us that the best? I think this time it's probably the tally chart that shows us the best. Because we can see here easily that that has two votes, although the bar graph is quite simple to use, as is the pie chart. Which chart is easiest to draw? What do you think? Probably not the pie chart, because we've got to draw a circle. 
which chart can can I draw while I'm collecting the data? Well, there's only one that you can actually do while you're going along, isn't there? Which one do you think that is? And which chart shows if more or less than an activity, less than half shows the same activity? Well, there's only one chart that really allows us to compare to a whole, and that's the pie chart. And there you've got the answers there. OK, let's have a look at this task. Which section of the pie chart represents each activity? So we've got a tally chart here, we've got the pie chart and we've got a bar chart. So what do each of the sections represent? In the pie, we've got the numbers of children doing each of the activities. But it, and it shows us the whole number of children in total. So how many children did cricket? We can see from our tally chart that there were three children who did cricket. So if we look on our pie chart for three, that means that this section here must be cricket. I'm just going to put that for short. OK, let's go back to the tally chart here and have a look at the cycling. We've got eight people who did cycling. So where is that on the pie chart? We can see that here is eight. So therefore, this section must be cycling. Okay, so the next activity is swimming. How many people did swimming? The easiest place again to see that is on the tally chart. And two people did swimming. So therefore, on the pie graph, that has to be swimming. And finally, let's double check this. We have 14 for football. So therefore, this section must be football on the pie chart. Question two. Below are three charts showing the medals that the British team won at the Olympic Games in 2016. Choose a chart to answer each question. So what we're really looking for here is which is the best chart that we can use to answer each of those individual questions. How many more gold medals than silver medals did the team win? So which chart do you think is the best for working that out? Which colour medal was approximately a quarter of the total. Now you're comparing to the total. So which one do you think is the easiest one to see? How many medals were won in total? So here, which chart do you think is the easiest for you to see. I'm not going to go through the answers of those because I really want you to have a go at that on your own. You know the answers are going to be on the next slide anyway. Your real challenge is can you explain to me why you've chosen those charts for each of those questions? And then I've got some extra questions there for you to have a go at as well your answers. Now in your practice book, question one, these pie charts show three after school clubs. In which club do more than half of the children play football? So the first thing you've got to do is think about the key. Which one? Is it the white bit that's football, the grey bit or the spotty bit? So that's your first thing. And then you've got to decide which 
circle, which pie chart shows that more than half are playing football? Is it A, is it B or is it C? And that's what you're going to write in that sentence. Children in a class, this is number two, children in a class did a survey to find out which jobs they wanted to do when they were older. So you can see from here, some wanted to be a teacher, some wanted to be a pop star, some wanted to be a sports person, others wanted to be a vet, and a few didn't know. So then you have to decide whether these statements are true or false. Less than half wanted to be a pop star. So what I want you to think about is where is half if we were to draw a line? So if we were going to draw a line, it would go straight down, wouldn't it? That would be half. So are the pop stars less than half or more than half? So it says less than half wanted to be a pop star. Is that true or is it false? The least popular job was a vet. Do you think that is true or not? Most, more children wanted to be a sports person than a teacher. True or false? Question three, match the pie charts to the correct team set of results. So you've got team A, 115, lost 10, drew 5. Whereas team B, one five, lost 10, drew 15. Team C, they did exactly the same, 10 for each. And then team D, they didn't lose any, they either only won or they drew. So how I would start doing this is I would actually look at team D first. So team D didn't lose any. So their pie chart is only going to be split into two sections. Can you find that one? Then I'd look at team C. I chose team C because they have an equal amount in each of the sections on the pie chart. So which of the three pie charts that are left is split into three equal sections? Then I've only got team A and team B left. So I'm going to then look at how many each of them won. Well, team A won 15 and team B won 5. So which team won the most? Which pie chart, therefore, has the most wins? Then question four. This tally chart shows the favourite sports of children in one class. Shade in the sections of the pie and complete the key based on the information on the tally chart. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to do some completing, aren't we? We have to think about the different subjects and where we're going to write them. So let's make this one is maths and maybe you want to make the math section dotty so we could have my math section is dotty because I'm having to do a key to be able to understand and then maybe my next section is science so what key could I use for science well, maybe science, I'm just going to do red stripes. And then finally, English. I wonder what I could do for English. Maybe I'm going to do crisscross stripes for English. Like that. Now I've got to decide what the tally is showing. So how many students did maths? Well, you've got 10 there and you've got four more. So that's going to be 14. In science, we've got seven and in English, 10. So which was the most favorite subject? It was maths, wasn't it? So which 
part of your pie, which section of your pie shows the biggest amount? Science was the least. So which section is going to be science? I'll let you finish that one off. And then you've got some challenges that you can go through. And then you've got your reflection at the end. Have fun today and good luck.